This is the Garrett Ace 300i, a very economical detector with powerful features to help you find more coins, jewelry, and artifacts. The Ace 300i includes digital target ID with a large 0 to 99 scale for more target information, an 8 kHz frequency for improved sensitivity on low and medium conductivity targets like gold and lead, a new 7 inch by 10 inch concentric search coil offering excellent coverage and depth and adjustable frequency to help eliminate electrical interference or other detectors in competition hunts. Cam locks for increased stem stability and a sharp, responsive pulse width modulation audio. The ACE 300i includes three free accessories. Garrett volume control headphones, an environmental cover-up to protect the control box from rain, dust, and mud, and a coil cover to protect your search coil from scratches and chips during use. Assembly of your new ACE detector is very simple. Loosen the lower cam lock and extend the lower stem. Insert the mounting washers Connect the search coil to the stem and hand tighten the wing nut. Loosen the upper cam lock. Insert the S stem with the control housing. Adjust the lower stem to a comfortable height and hand tighten the cam locks. Wrap the coil cable snugly around the stem with the first turn over the stem. Insert the coil connector into the control housing connector and hand tighten. The arm cuff can be adjusted by removing the screw on the bottom and mounting the two-piece cuff to the other hole. To power on the detector, simply press the power button. To power off, press the power button again. To restore your detector to factory settings, simply press the power button and hold for about five seconds. When you hear that double beep, you'll see that it's moved to coins mode, which is the factory default setting. The ACE 300i also includes this battery level indicator. When it's down to only one bar remaining, it's time to change your batteries soon. Your gear at ACE 300i is always going to indicate all targets that it encounters in the field, so it's important that you understand target ID. Let's take a look at that. The ACE 300i's target ID includes this legend at the top. Ferrous or iron items are going to indicate more toward the left side. Non-ferrous or more conductive items are going to indicate more toward the right side. This lower scale of pixels, you can see that they're all switched on. Everything is active. Nothing has been rejected. So I've got some targets on the ground so we can show more about target ID. Anything that's accepted in this range, you're gonna get audio and also get the pixel at the top. But you'll also get that target ID pixel if it's rejected. You just don't hear the audio, but you still see that pixel up there in the upper left, indicating it's something that you rejected. And if you also notice to the right, you're getting a depth indication. In this case, it's in five centimeter increments. So this item would be about 10 centimeters deep if I was gonna dig for it. That's your third element. I've got another coin over here, an old bronze one. It's accepted. And you'll notice the two digit digital target ID number at the bottom. That's a more precise reading that corresponds with the upper row. So I know the depth. I've got a precise digital target ID number. And of course, I've got my target ID pixel at the top. All this is the information that you get with the ACE 300's target ID. One thing to note on the depth indication, items that are very small, much smaller than a coin, may actually be sitting shallower than what they indicate. The other way around, 
items that are very large, much larger than a coin, may actually be sitting deeper than what they show. So keep in mind, this is based on coin-sized objects. Also, for your digital target ID, it's important to note, keep your target centered. Keep the coil very level. Keep your swing very even and flat above the target, and you're going to get a more consistent and more precise target ID. The ACE 300i makes three distinctive tones based on a metal's conductivity. So I've got some targets on the ground here. I've got a steel washer. I've got a little piece of aluminum foil. And I've got a silver coin. So let's listen to the three different tones that we get. The low tone, the mid tone, and the high tone as we go over these targets. Okay, our first target, the steel washer, we're going to get a low tone. And that's for anything with a digital target ID reading from 0 to 32. Our foil over here is going to give us a medium tone. That's for anything reading from 33 to 75, like that. As we get over here to this high tone item, that's going to be 75 or higher on a target. That's going to produce a high tone. So we've got our high tone target, our bell tone. Our mid tone sound like that. And our low tone. Now let's take a look at the different discrimination patterns and other features of the Garrett ACE 300i. Use the mode plus or minus buttons to select between four preset discrim patterns or create your own custom pattern. In zero disk, nothing is notched. All 12 pixels are active. Use this mode when a target signal is inconsistent or when you don't know exactly what type of metal you're looking for. In jewelry mode, it ignores most iron trash but it will find rings, watches, bracelets, and other types of jewelry. In custom mode, you can set your own discrimination pattern. And if you turn the machine off and then turn it back on again, it'll keep, it'll remember the pattern that you set there. Relics mode eliminates most small iron, but it keeps lead, brass, bronze, and other lower conductors in play. Coins mode is designed to find all types of coins and eliminate common trash like foil, iron, and pull tabs. Be aware that some small jewelry could be ignored in this pattern, however. With notch discrimination, there's two ways to get rid of targets that you don't want to dig. For demonstration purposes, I've got this pull tab here. I'll just put this on the ground. And then we'll go over it and I'll show you two different ways to notch that out and eliminate it. So here's our pull tab that we put down on the ground. Go over it. It's reading about 78. Normally I wouldn't notch something that high up, but just for demonstration purposes, and that's where this tab reads, I'm going to go in. I can use my plus or minus buttons, move it around, and then push the elimination button down there to knock out that pixel so that when I go back over it, it's silent. I still see the cursor, I'm getting a number, but I'm not hearing it because I'm notching out that particular tab. I can bring that pixel back into play, and if the cursor was not over it already, there's a second way you can notch out a trash target like that. Again, I'm encountering dozens of these tabs, let's say, that I've dug all day. I'm tired of it and I want to get rid of it. As soon as I hit another one that I don't want to dig, I've got that number up and I've got it highlighted. I can simply hit a limb and knock out that pixel immediately. So now it's silent as I go back over it. Again, I still see the cursor, got a number, but it's silent. So there's two ways to notch out a trash target. There are four minor frequency adjustments that you can use in order to minimize interference caused by electrical sources or by other metal detectors. To switch frequencies, Hold down the LM button and change the setting with the Discrim plus or minus buttons. There are also eight levels of sensitivity. Increase sensitivity when you're searching for a very small item or a very deep item. Decrease your sensitivity level when the detector is behaving erratically due to excessive metal trash or highly mineralized grounds. Your ACE detector includes an electronic pinpointing function. Accurate pinpointing is very important because it allows you to recover targets faster, to dig a smaller recovery hole, 
and to get on back to your business of finding more stuff that much quicker. So what we'll do here is I've got a coin and we'll just do a demonstration. I'm gonna put this in the ground. I've already dug a hole here. So I'll put this coin a few inches in the ground here and I'll bury it back up, get that out of the way, and uh, I'll smooth out the dirt, push it back over it. And then I've got this little blue plastic chip. I'm gonna put this over the top of where the target is just for demonstration purposes so you can better see how the pinpointing is working. So let's drop that in there. Okay, we've got our target we planted in the ground here, but let's just imagine we're out hunting and we hear a good target, what we think's a good target, and we decide we want to pinpoint. Well, to use our electronic pinpoint function, you kind of gauge about where that target is and then step to the side of it before you use pinpoint so you don't accidentally tune it out. Then press and hold down the pinpoint button. You'll see the letters PP for pinpoint come up. Then go back over that suspected target area. You'll hear louder audio and see more bars across the top as you get over your target. And when you're right over it centered the best, you get the most audio and the most bars. So not only this way, but go back and forth, kind of X marks the spot, forward, backward, east, west, north, south, until you've got the strongest number of bars and the loudest audio, and you should be pinpointed right above your target. It's that simple. To better understand your gear at ACE300i, it's recommended to do some bench testing. It doesn't have to be a bench like this, but you want a place where you can keep the coil flat and level for your target swinging, keep the coil away from any metal, and away from any electrical interference. I have it set in zero disc mode, and I've got a variety of targets here, so we can hear low, mid, and high tones. Uh, first off, I've got a steel washer. Low tone, kind of low numbers there. Here's another iron object, it's a square nail. Numbers are kind of low. I'm swinging it to the coil this direction, but if you notice when I turn it and come back, now the numbers are jumping all over the place. That's a characteristic of iron, so it's important things like this you can learn during bench testing. Target orientation comes into play as well as conductivity. Here's a piece of foil. You'll find this in parks like this everywhere, all sizes. This particular piece, it's a mid-tone sound. Again, a bigger piece might be a little bit bigger number, might be a different sound if it jumps up higher. Here's a small, thin gold ring. That's jumped up into the high tone. Again, gold rings will be all over the range depending on their size and how thick they are. Here's a pull tab, big thing to find in the parks. 78, so if you dig a whole bunch of them like this, you can notch it out, but that's where that reads. Let's go to a small silver coin. High 80s, a little bit larger silver coin, higher up in the 90s. So you can get an idea based on size and thickness of targets, how it can change the numbers a little bit, how orientation changes them. The next step you can do from this is move from your bench testing or your air testing to actual dirt testing. Create yourself a test plot, make sure the soil is clear of all metal, dig around, get it out with your pinpointer until it's clear and then bury some of these targets and go over them again at different depths and see, does the audio change? Does the number change? Change the orientation from a flat orientation to laying straight up on end. The more you do, the more you dig, the more you test like this, the more you'll learn your target ID on your detector and the better you're gonna be when you get in the field like this digging real targets. Good luck to you. Here's a few search tips to use with your ACE 300i. First, keep the coil close to the soil at all times and swing it very level for the best results. Walk slowly in a straight line, swinging the search coil side to side at a rate of about two to five feet per second. Overlap the coil by half its length over each search area. When your battery level indicator shows one bar remaining, it's time to change batteries. Nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries can be used but they may have shorter life per charge than standard alkaline batteries. 1.5 volt lithium batteries can also be used, but 3.7 volt lithium batteries will damage the detector and should not be used. Access the batteries by sliding the cover off the control housing. 
Remove the batteries when the detector will be stored more than 30 days. Avoid extreme temperatures such as storing detectors in car trunks during the summer or in sub-freezing weather. Periodically disassemble your detector and clean the stems, control housing, and search coil with a damp cloth. This environmental cover-up helps protect your control housing electronics from dust, mud, and rain. Protect your search coil from scratches and chips by installing a Garrett coil cover. Expand your search options with one of these ACE series accessory search coils. This small super sniper coil and this 5x8 double D coil are ideal for searching in tight areas and in separating numerous adjacent targets in trashier hunt sites. Larger concentric search coils provide the greatest detection depth and the largest possible detection fields. The Garrett Pro Pointer is highly recommended for all detectorists to speed their recovery of detected targets, to dig smaller recovery holes, and to identify multiple targets in close proximity. The Pro Pointer AT can even be used underwater to a maximum 10-foot depth. To learn more about your new ACE detector and to see the latest Garrett accessories, be sure to visit garrett.com.